Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Francis A. Reed, a graduate of the Yale School of Medicine, a former member of the Board of Health of Greenwich, Connecticut, where I have practiced surgery for the past 25 years. Before introducing Dr. Foreman, a physician of Columbus, Ohio, I will give you some of his qualifications. He was originally trained as a pathologist, one who uh, studies the microscopical anatomy of diseased tissues. Now he is a practicing applied immunologist, past president of the American College of Allergists and director general of the International Correspondence Society of Allergists. For the past 20, 45 years, Dr. Foreman has been an active, skillful, and careful interpreter of medical research. He is serving on the editorial boards of nine medical journals, serving for 23 years as editor of the Ohio State Medical Journal, and presently as editor-in-chief of clinical physiology and of the letters of the International Society of Allergists. Dr. Foreman has been interested in fluorine and its role as a trace element in biology since 1950. He publishes a bibliography of references in the literature dealing with fluorine. This has now grown to over 4,000 items. It is now my privilege to introduce to you Dr. Jonathan Foreman. It's my pleasure to present to you a film which represents an investigation into the safety of fluoridation by the use of time-lapse photographic film as viewed under the microscope. This film will show that sodium fluoride in uh, concentrations of 1 to 30 million does damage uh, to cells which are growing outside the body in tissue culture. For many years, it has been known that sodium fluoride inhibits uh, enzyme systems that are vital to the life of each cell in all parts of the body. For documentation, we have no less an authority than that of Dr. Hugo Thorell, the Swedish winner of the Nobel Prize for researches into the action of these enzymes. Dr. Thorell, on the basis of his studies throughout the years, has continuously been warning in recent years uh, the possible uh, menace to the health of whole populations of the indiscriminate use of fluoridation. His findings were only recently confirmed by two British investigators, Dr. Roger Berry and Wilford Trillwood at Oxford University. These scientists exposing live cells growing outside of a body to one twentieth the strength of sodium fluoride that is proposed to be added to our water supplies discovered serious changes in growth patterns and in reporting this in the British Medical Journal, they warned that there must be more research before fluoridation of our public water supply can be really considered safe. I want to make it very clear from the beginning that this film is a study and graphic record of the poisonous action of uh, uh, fluorides on living cells growing by themselves outside the body in proper and con commonly used nutrient medium. This film, therefore, is not shown here to, uh, only to demonstrate graphically what the biochemists have known for some time, but also to confirm the recent work of Berry and Trillwood in England. Namely, that fluorine is a protoplasmic poison and toxic to cells in very dilute uh, solutions. Concentrations far below that recommended to be put in our drinking water. Connective tissue cells were used in these experiments because of the importance of the tissue, uh, this type of tissue, uh, to the chemistry of the human body and because connective tissue does give support to and give form to 
and controls in many ways all the other cells of the body. Mouse connective tissues were used because in the, nutri the nutrition of the mouse is very much like that of the human, since they are both uh, mammals which nurse their young. And furthermore, because these cells are regularly used in toxicity studies such as this. A word about the technique of time-lapse photography. This movie effect has been accomplished by taking a single photograph through the eyepiece of a microscope at regular intervals uh, throughout the study and then showing all of these photographs continuously uh, through a projector. And what you see in a minute has actually taken hours to produce. You are about to see the connective tissue cells that we have just talked about growing on a standard culture medium outside the body. You will note that these cells are functioning in an orderly but exceedingly active fashion. You will note, too, that the cell reproduction is taking place. Cells are dividing. In looking for this, you will note that the central or vital spot in the cell, called the nucleus, is composed of chromosomes. These are the material from which inheritance and genes of inheritance are uh, produced. Note also that this chromatic material for uh, reproduction divides into two equal parts, takes a place uh, after separation opposite each other, and splits then the rest of the cell into two new cells. This reproduction process is, of course, essential to, the, uh, to affect the needed uh, replacement and repair of the tissues. Now, uh, please remember, uh, these cells uh, we are seeing now have not been poisoned by coming in contact with the fluoride in any dilution. Here again, you'll see the dynamic activity of reproduction through normal cell division, background streaming of the fluids, and the engulfment of particles that takes place in the normal fashion. Now you're about to see the crux of this whole study. In this experiment, sodium fluoride in a concentration of one part in 30 million is perfused into a growing active culture of cells. This dilution of sodium fluoride has been used in other experiments varying from a strength of one part in one million to one part in 20 millions and even in one part in 60 million. In all of these dilutions, damage has been done to the cells, but uh, this particular dilution of one to 30 million has been chosen for this demonstration because it represents the same dilution as would be in the blood of uh, fluorine ions in an adult human being who's drinking daily the recommended one quart of fluoridated water at 1.2 parts per million. You will recall that the fluoridators assume that all human beings will consume on the average exactly one quart of water per day. Now, as we begin the next section of the film, you will see an entirely different picture. There's a temporary revival of cellular activity af after the perfusion. This, however, is soon followed by a marked slowing up of the normal activities as the fluorine ions begin to adversely affect the cells. All right, you will know here where the uh, fluorine has just been inter introduced that there is a distinct stimulation of all the cells as they react to the poison. This we take to be a defense mechanism. Then big things begin to slow up and reproduction is definitely inhibited. Here we have another a demonstration of uh, the uh, destruction of cells by a perfusion of one part in 30 million. Notice the swelling of the mitochondria in the body of the cells. Notice the compaction of the uh, material in the center or vital spot, which we call the nucleus of the cells. 
That, too, is evidence of injury. Note the swelling of the membranes around the cells. This makes it impossible for them to absorb foodstuff. Note they're shriveling up now. There are no cells dividing. All is becoming still. Most of the cells are dead or dying. This demonstrates the toxicity of this material. In summary, I wish to make it very clear again that this film, which you have just seen, is a graphic record of what we and Drs. Berry and Trillwood have seen in our cultures when they were perfused with dilute solutions of sodium fluoride. This film itself is presented here only to show that mammalian cells in tissue cultures can be and are damaged by fluorides, and some even killed when their contact with sodium fluoride is in the concentration of one part in 30 million. And we do have photographic records showing almost the same thing in one part in 60 million. Poisonous sodium fluoride in these concentrations may not be toxic enough to kill the cells or to destroy an organ or possibly the individual himself. Nevertheless, in human bodies, such poisons are subtle, insidious, and if prolonged over months and years, as in this case where fluoridated water is being used, chronic disorders and upsets of function in one or more of the vital organs may ensue. Outward manifestations of such toxic effects may not be apparent at the time to the victim or to his physician. But the constant drinking of fluoridated water may bring about a gradual accumulation of damaged and scarred tissue in the various organs, resulting in the production of many vague complaints in some or in nearly all parts of the body. This makes it most difficult for the physician to diagnose unless one is very alert to the effects of fluoridated water and its consumption. To sum up all this then, one is forced to conclude that the safety of fluoridation has not yet been proved. The experiments that you have just seen cast most serious doubt on the safety of fluoridation. We feel compelled to agree with the Congressional Committee on Food and uh, Drugs and Chemicals, who, after extensive investigations under the Honorable James J. Delaney of New York, way back some years ago, 1952, question the safety of fluoridation and urge caution. And above all, they emphasize the need for more research, even before anyone would consider fluoridation. To all this, we most heartily do agree. The proponents of fluoridation have not produced this research. The safety of fluoridation still needs to be proved. And we who have made this a film from over 24,000 photographs in continuity under the microscope at intervals of exactly 39 seconds between each film bring you this demonstration of toxic effects of fluoridation. We have only begun our research into the effects of drinking fluoridated water. We ask for your support.